Welcome to this video. I hereby sum up markers and groups that were significant in populating Africa etc., as well as in the formation of black skin in Africa etc. D, E, D, and the youngest but the in Africa very important E. Important here is that all these are the so-called YAP markers and carried by YAP groups, and that they are also markers for black skin. All people that present black skin carry YAP markers, but not all people that carry YAP markers present black skin. These YAP and black skin markers are not carried by any other groups than the above YAP groups. At this point I claim that all in this video is very much simplified and resumed. This said, maybe you can think of it like a switch in the YAP groups that decides whether a group or a person presents black skin or not. Einstein and Mandela are both of the here discussed group E, but one I think is considered presenting a more white skin and the other is considered presenting a more black skin. In the former video we saw that all these YAP groups and YAP markers are still predominant in Japan, with D being more predominant in Japan than in any other place in the world. These YAP groups and markers in Japan are rather logical when departing from an out of America hypothesis because the currents and winds will force all Native American descendants navigating on the west coast of the Americas to Oceania and after Oceania also to Japan, and the YAP groups and markers obviously are amongst them. The same for many other places like at the end also Africa. These groups and markers, as well as the currents and winds associate well with, and explain well the area that is defined as the Austronesian expansion. It is possible that Japan was simply very important for the expanding Native Americans with these markers, because departing from Japan they could easily enter important rivers like the Yellow and Yangtze River which were important in the population of what is now China and Mongolia, and especially Tibet and Myanmar with D. Further through the Yellow River and probably Mongols, the descendants of Native Americans spread out yet another, also, Native American fundamental marker named the Diego blood group system. All this explains relatively well the fact of predominance of the above YAP groups and markers in Japan, and later also in Africa for more or less the same reasons. Since the black skin markers traveled west to Africa through this Austronesian expansion area, this also explains the presence of black skin an important part of those that carry the above black skin markers in the Austronesian expansion area, and this all the way from Oceania, and possibly the Americas, to Africa, but also in locations seemingly extreme far away as Hawaii. Overland. Predominance in Japan is impossible or quite a paradigm when departing from an out-of-Africa hypothesis, because if migration had been overland, this migration should have left more important traces and markers already between Africa and Japan, apart from it being highly improbable for Africans or anyone else to have migrated overland non-stop from Africa to Japan. Also and especially because Japan is an island since at least 11,000 years and again during other interglacials before. Oversea. Since overland there are large continent-like regions of continental size without these groups and markers, and also since Japan must have been an island for at least 11,000 years, we must consider migration by sea. Predominance in Japan is impossible or quite a paradigm when departing from an out-of-Africa hypothesis, this also by sea, this because the currents and winds would systematically force back to Africa any descendants or migrants trying to expand out of Africa to the east over sea, leaving them without realistic chances to reach Japan so early and predominantly as well as to reach all people with these markers which cover a quite substantial area of the order of magnitude of half of the planet. Migration over land, or by sea, cannot explain the early presence and predominance of supposed African markers in Japan, Myanmar and Tibet, and explain even less the people presenting black skin all the way from Oceania to Africa and certainly to Hawaii and possibly the Americas. Next step with MS and especially Austronesian DNA. Why DNA MS and obviously Austronesian DNA is very much associated with the same Austronesian expansion from Oceania up to Africa or even from the Americas up to Africa. This strong association could explain well the predominance of the presence of black skin amongst Austronesians like for example indigenous Australians, 
and could also explain the migration of C, D, and E in the direction of Africa. I added C to the list because D and E are supposed to have risen from C, and while C has its root in the Americas, C is also observed on the coasts between the Americas and Africa like also the Middle East coasts. Predominance of black skin so early on in Austronesians and in peoples with Y-DNA MS is impossible or quite a paradigm when departing from an out-of-Africa hypothesis, for already above-mentioned reasons, but especially because the currents and winds will force back to Africa without chance to reach the whole of the region and Australia, Papua New Guinea but especially Oceania including Easter Island and Hawaii. Third and last step. Ancient Native American DNA is registered in indigenous people in islands of all sizes in and around the Austronesian expansion region, including Oceanian Islands, Australia, Papua New Guinea, Andaman, Anj, India, not an island, and Africa and this also in people that present black skin. Because of the association with what is discussed in Step 1 and Step 2, I consider that all described in step 1 and 2 also is rather ancient just like the spread out Native American DNA that is clearly ancient. Thank you for watching. Bye.